In East Africa, Tanzania's National Assembly Speaker Tulia Aksin has been elected as the 31st President of the Interparliamentary Union, a global organization of national parliaments. She was elected after receiving 172 votes of 303 casts in the 147th IPU Assembly. Now, Axon takes over from Duarte Pacheco, a parliamentarian from Portugal who concluded his three-year mandate. She says the task ahead will be to ensure IPU plays a front seat in nurturing peace and unity across the world. The Interparliamentary Union, founded 130 years ago, encourages cooperation and dialogue between nations. I'm now joined by Emmanuel Ukashu, advocate of the High Court of Tanzania, to discuss this further. Thank you so much for joining me, Emmanuel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. So, Advocate, can you tell me or tell us how significant is Tulia Axon's election as the president of the IPU in terms of promoting peace and unity globally? First and foremost is that uh, Tulia, Dr. Dr. Tulia Axon, she has been one of the head of the geopolitics in Africa conducted under the IPU. That means Dr. Tulia Axon, she's well acquainted with the knowledge about the spheres of the peace and all the global international issues of the politics and interparliamentary in the IPU. Therefore, at this juncture whereby she's ascending to the power as the president, sitting, being head in the council of interpar interpar IPU, that means she stands very loudly to ensure the reaffirm of the institution to have a sustainable institutions of parliamentary, global peace, and all other conflicts of the countries and all interparliamentary to be resolved as she plays a very great role. And if you take on the record that she's becoming the third woman to hold the president of IPU and the first from Africa. So she has got a very significant, not only for Tanzania, but for the global and Africa continent in large to play and to ensure the very integrated pieces and to integrate the community of the democrat values in each and every civic space represented in a political by the MPs or members of the parliament for all over the countries and the world. All right, um, uh, Advocate. Now, what role does the IPU play in encouraging cooperation and dialogue between nations? And how does the president contribute to this mission? Okay. The first is that IPU, as one of the founding founding organization or one of the funny leading union its first role is that it it unify all the global parliamentaries organization and assemblies that's the first role and do that doing that is that it ensures to to provide guidance to provide the access and to know the independence of parliamentary supreme masses to know the roles of legislation, to know how the members of the parliament are elected and their duties and roles as the members of the parliament, and the key roles and the values, how to delegate and how to enact the lawmakers' laws in the particular organization. But second, how is the president now, Dr. Wright, Honorable Dr. Twilly Axon play? She, she is the first of the head, and she's the head of the institution. That means she gives the guidance, she makes a statement, she makes a call for any parliamentary that is misbehaving or she's, what is not in order. She calls for the order, she guides, she supervises, and she gives directive. So that's the very great role of the president of IPU. She cannot summon people maybe to take to jail, no. She gives directions on laws and sovereignty without prejudice the sovereignty of the particular state, without also interfering the supremacy of the particular parliamentary, but she gives the engagement and how to see the liaison of the IPU and particular organizations and how to see the IPU and particular parliamentary. So she's the day-to-day -day overseer of the, all the parliamentary in the world to, to play the key values for the betterment of their citizens in their respective countries. All right, so uh, now uh, can you tell us if there are any legal challenges or considerations that the IPU faces in its efforts to promote peace and unity? First of all, it's about sovereignty. Sovereignty that IPU is an international body. 
And that means if it's at a national body, that means cannot in encroach or interfere the sovereignty. So that's the first challenge in legal, that the sovereignty of the country must be protected at the same time, but also the IPU must oversee or must see how to supervise the particular institution. So that's the challenge. So that means IPU cannot just encroach directly to the particular misbehaving parliamentary or members of the parliament or whatever is in the parliamentary of the particular nation. It cannot go direct. It has to use the diplomatic issues to go between it. So that means it is a soft softy order, not a hard order to make or somebody is obliged to comply to. But second is that the members who are under IPU, they have made a lot of declarations, but the declarations are all about implementing the policy way forward. It's not about how to make accountability or how to make the particular institution be responsible or to be somewhat for other accountability, no. And that's why when the speaker, Dr. Tully Hudson, appointed as the president, said that he knows the role of the IPU, but also he should make their firm without prejudice the particular remaining standing orders of how to lead in the IPU. So the great challenge is about how of the sovereignty. Sovereignty is a very serious challenge in towards the IPU. But rather, it has not uh, been much advocated to the normal commoners to know about the role of IPU. Mm. So it's a rule, it's the duty now of the sitting that the first speaker Dr. Tuli Axon to make more advocates to the people to know about this very important institution and how people can engage about it. Because also there's an avenue in the IPU to make some lodge of complaints in case of any speaker who is misbehaving in any country and how to deal with that complaint. So the citizens must know this also is an avenue which is not much open to everyone to know about it. All right, well, thank you so much, Advocate Emmanuel Ukashu, for uh, joining us on New Central Now and speaking to us on this.